What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Pete's Carport. We've got a fun video. We're going to be doing a conductor plate on Xavier's 1999 Mercedes S 500. So let's step over here. We got Manny who's got an awesome YouTube channel called Metal Unique. I will link that down below for you guys. And uh, Xavier's got his TCM out. So you take a look at that and it's got a little bit of oil up in here. When he pulled it out, if you look down in there, you can see and that's kind of telling you that it's got an issue. So Manny's down there taking off the transmission uh, plate, the cover. He's already drained the fluid. Once he pulls that out, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. He's going to show us exactly how to swap these conductor plates out. It's something he's done before. Very inexpensive, but very common on these transmissions. They will jump into what's called limp mode, and that basically won't allow you to drive at full operating speed. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that limp mode can can occur but this one is a very common way so once Manny gets that out we'll take a look at how we swap that out um, this is a very easy job it does take some time not really any special tools but this is a very heavy vehicle so make sure you can support your vehicle because once you slide under there you want to make sure the car has a lot of support so let's go ahead I'll update you guys as we get this out so we got Xavier over here. He's cleaning down uh, the TCM with electrical cleaner. Let me see that real quick. That's uh, made by CRC. This is stuff that I use all the time. So you want to pick this up uh, to go ahead and clean down your TCM. And what causes that is this piece right here, this little gasket, uh, the oil will leak through that out your conductor plate and then up. It's actually quite a phenomenon. It goes up the uh, wires and into there and shorts out and that's what causes your limp mode. So that's the first thing you want to check is your TCM and you can see there, you want to clean it down until it's completely clean, let it air dry, it doesn't take long. This stuff, uh, the CRC stuff, dries pretty quickly. So we're gonna be doing that. Manny's almost finishing up dropping down the transmission and uh, we'll be able to get all that changed out. Not the transmission, but the conductor plate out of the transmission, what he's dropping down. So once you've got your pan down, uh, what Xavier's doing here is checking everything with a magnet. You want to check for metal pieces just to make sure nothing else is blown and we're looking good, so that's good news. And uh, Manny's still down there getting ready to pull out the valve body and the valve body is basically attached to the um, conductor plate and that's what we're going after. On the conductor plate, uh, we're going to go ahead and we can test the solenoids. We'll show you how to do that. Manny has a little trick on that. All right, so Manny has the, we got the valve body out. I'm gonna let Manny explain to you exactly what happened. So this is what happens, the, uh, this right here splits right here. This is the speed sensor. Oil goes in there and it shorts everything out. Oh, so this is where it leaks and then kind of leads up to the uh, right. TCM as well? So it splits right here and then it starts to leak oil through here and everything else. Well, that kind of tells us this needs to be changed out and that is our issue. And like I said, he's got limp mode on his car. We kind of knew what it was when it happened. And uh, Manny was nice enough to come out here and show us how to do this. And uh, he's going to pop that off. I'll try to record as much as I can and give you guys as much information as I can so you guys can do this at home. So this yeah. is the uh, replacement kit here. You're going to get a new filter. We're going to crack that filter open uh, just as a precautionary to see if we've got any metal chunks in there. Uh, Manny's going ahead and taking this apart. What you're going to do is, what are you taking off there? Is that this just is a protector? This is what keeps the particles from falling on the uh, solenoids right here. So that just pops off. I'm yeah, guessing no screws. Uh, what screws do you need to take out to get your um, conductor plate off? I think it's just these right here. The same one that I used for the. Uh, that's another cover that pops off right there. He's got his hand. And uh, we can test these too. So those rarely go, but we're going to go ahead and test those. And these are your uh, shift solenoids. Uh, Manny, didn't you say you can take a 9-volt uh, battery and test those? Is that what you said? Uh, no, it's got to be a 12-volt. A 12-volt 12 12 battery, I'm sorry. You can take a 12-volt battery and test these. He's going to show us how to do that. That way we know if those are working because I'd hate to get this whole thing back up in there. And that is an issue as well. We know the conductor plate was our causing issue, as you can see right there, how bad that is. Uh, but this is our new set here. You've got gasket here uh, and your new conductor plate right here. And what is this called again right here? That's the, uh, the plug that goes on this. Here. I forgot yeah, so that's the there. plug that goes right on the end there. So that is another uh, leading cause of it this leaking. Is what causes, this is what fails right here. These two O-rings right here. Gotcha. Okay, so these O-rings are what fail a lot. Yeah. So inexpensive pieces, but cause a lot of damage. So, uh, okay, you so notice, notice how the, uh, the hold-on spring here is? It's got like a slight bend in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to tighten it back down to. Oh, got you. Okay. Sometimes it'll spring back. So right you want to pay attention to that and right. see where that is and tighten it back down to that. Is, you, is there a torque spec for that or? No, not really. I usually go 12, 15 pounds. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, Sounds about right. Crazy with it. 
So not too tight, 12, 15 pounds of pressure on there, but make sure you get it back to where it was. As you can see, that uh, Torx bolt just comes out now, right these there. These two um, cylinders here, these two and these two are all the same part numbers, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. So that what he was saying was you can take these all out, they can all go back into different yeah. spots, it doesn't it's matter, they're all the exact right same. Here, oh, these right two right here are different, but these... These two right here. Gotcha, those are interchangeable. Usually what I'll do is I'll take pictures of this, so, you know, but I, I always put them back in the same spot. Gotcha, we got video, so we'll be good. I can tell you guys at home, if you do video of everything that you're doing, especially if you have a second person helping out, um, that'll be a lifesaver because if you start this job, let's say you go back to it three or four days later, sometimes you can't remember exactly how something came out. This is a good way to remember that. Pictures work out well too, so if you have your phone, make sure you do video pictures of everything you're doing. Remember this bolt here. Anyway, you've seen the video. This bolt here is longer. That's the one that goes on. So the, the one line. that goes right, right here is going to be longer. So you want to pull these out? I usually put them right here. These are the two non-interchangeable ones. Right. It's going to slide over here. Keep Smart to here. put those off the side. I've seen people even take like a cardboard box and stick them on there and then write on there. That way you right. can label usually everything. What I'll do is I'll just put them right back on here again. Gotcha. Yeah, since we got our replacement right here. You at home might be taking this out and you haven't even ordered your replacement yet. So make sure when you're setting this off to the side that you label everything so you don't mess up while putting it back. Who wants to redrop this back down and have to refill their fluid? Nobody. I'm gonna pop this off carefully here. As you can see there, the conductor plates popping up after he gets those uh, Torx bolts out. Something that snaps in. Yeah. There we go. And now I'll put this one back over here. Do this one here. Do this one here. Yeah, that makes that sense. Until I get everything back together. Yep. So as you can see, man, he's just like sticking everything back on the old one, setting it up. That way when he puts the new one on, he can easily just transfer everything over. That's a smart way of doing it. You know what? Let's step over here. We're going to pop open. Um, this is our filter real quick. Let me grab a screwdriver. We'll pop this open. All right, so we got the uh, filter here taken apart. As you guys can see, there are a little bit of metal flakes, but he has like 180,000 miles on this car, so we kind of confirmed that that is not terrible, so uh, that's good news. And uh, Manny's talking about um, replacing out, what is this called here? This, what do you mean, uh, the conductor player? No, you're talking about changing out that part. Oh, the, the PIL, IL link. PIL, yeah. PIL, <laughs> Whatever. PIL, With the PIL, link, IL basically, link, yeah. uh, what that does is that that's a shifting link, right? Right. And uh, these tend to go bad. There's uh, what a gasket in there, something that can no, go bad. No, actually, it's still under there. Oh, okay. And so once you have this down, you want to change that out if you can. It's a very inexpensive part. They tend to go bad over time. And in order to change it, you have to drop everything back down. So if you've got it out and you've got the part, the uh, dealerships do carry those in stock typically. Yeah. Uh, it's a good part to change out. So we're going to go see if we can get that. Um, meanwhile, he's matching everything up, seeing if we can get the uh, conductor plate back on there. And uh, everything's going nice and smoothly. So we should have this back up in there today. Wipe it down with a, with a, a paper towel first. Go ahead, junk out. So this is where we're at. We're going to go ahead and clean out the uh, pan here, get any of this metal, little tiny metal shavings uh, that are in here. Nothing terrible, but we're going to get all that out. Uh, yeah, I've got a whole roll in the, the bathroom. So we'll, yeah, so as you can see there, there are some metal shavings. We want to make sure you get that all cleaned out really good before putting it back in the car. And uh, Manny's got our new conductor plate just dropped back on. This is actually a very simple process, just watching this. Now you just gotta transfer over your uh, you wanna, solenoids. You test the models What's that? You wanna test them out? Oh yeah, we're gonna go ahead and test the solenoids out before we put them back in there. So let's get set up to do that. So to test your solenoids, we've got our battery down here. This is just a normal car battery, positive, negative. You grab your solenoid. It does not matter which one you put on. Yeah, you can hear it. And you can hear it. That's when you know your solenoid's good, when it clicks like that. So we're going to test each one of them. Uh, pretty confident they're going to be good because these are these tend to last a very long time. A lot of people, even when they have a bad solenoid, don't they're, replace it with new ones. Too. Yeah, you've got a stock part on there as well, too. So 
Let's go ahead and test one more just so you guys can get an idea. Oh yeah, that that's one's loud. All right, so if you guys are at home, that's an easy way of testing your solenoids. Definitely do that before you put them all back in the car, get it all up, because if a solenoid's bad, then you're gonna have to drop the whole thing back down again. Well, Manny went ahead and beat me to getting it recorded, but really it was simple. He uh, torqued slightly down uh, your springs here to match up with how they were before. Like we said, 12 to 15 pounds of torque is probably the spec on that. If I can find it online, I'll give you guys the exact torque spec on that. Uh, but he's been doing this for a while, and that seems to work out really, really well. Uh, these covers just snap back on like that, and he's going to put it right back up in there. And uh, you've got a gasket that goes on the pan that comes with the kit. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just slides right over the pan, and uh, that's going to just bolt right back in. Thank God that's rubber. That's not like the old... Get, um, cork oh yeah. Falls all over the place. Oh, way better. Uh, do you know the torque specs for the oil pan? I believe it's 27. Okay, I'll look that up, but we believe it's 27 foot pounds for that, and I'll put that probably just put it on the screen now, and I'll put that down in the description. So Manny's gonna go ahead and get this back up in here, and we're gonna basically add some fluid and get it started up. So uh, next time you guys, next time I come back, you guys will be here in this car start. All right, so guys, I wanted to catch this. So Manny's getting everything back up in there. That is the valve body that needs to come off. Uh, prior to getting the conductor plate. He took that off prior to sliding everything out and I kind of missed that but I wanted to fill you in and where he's having issues is on the plug. Uh, you come, it comes with a replacement plug because that is one of the main areas that it leaks and he ended up having to use a little rubber mallet to get it all in there because it is not easy. Sometimes they go right in he said and sometimes they're just a little too snug so you have to like tap on it with a rubber mallet as you can see he's about to do it just to get it up in there good. So that's really it, and then you're gonna slide um, your transmission pan back on there with the gasket, torque everything up, and then you're ready to fill it. So hopefully we can have this thing up and running in the next hour or so. Well, Manny almost got everything up in there, and unfortunately we ran into a small issue. Uh, you can see here, this was one of the bolts that was used, not a factory bolt, and that bolt looks like it's stripped. And then the other issue is uh, we have another one where somebody over torqued it and it stripped up inside of the actual transmission. So what uh, Manny and Xavier are gonna do, they're gonna run down to like Ace Hardware, see if they can figure out maybe a helicoil kit or a different size bolt that can go up in there and resolve that issue. And Xavier just got back with transmission fluid. Uh, Zay, what was the amount of quartz that are needed? 6.5 quarts, so it takes a ton. And these here are one US gallon, which is 3.78 liters. Uh, what is it, 6.5 liters or quarts? Quarts, quarts. So you might, <laughs> we might be off on that. So it's 6.5 quarts, these are, uh, this is 3.78 liters. He picked up two of them, but uh, we'll figure out exactly how much we need. I'll fill you in on that, guys. And uh, this is the Valvoline Max Life Full Synthetic and um, this is what you want to look for here. A lot of people are going to tell you you have to use Mercedes branded. Yes, that is a good route to go, but this you can pick up locally at the store. Mercedes, you usually have to order or get from a dealership. We want to get this done today, so he went down and picked this up. Um, I know that this is stuff a lot of people use out there. Manny uses this in all his transmissions, and it does work on this transmission. So we're going to use this, and I'll fill you guys in on the exact amount that goes in there and how much we use. We've got a dipstick. So these cars don't come with a dipstick on this trans and you got to use one of these here and Manny brought his along so we'll be able to tell exactly where it's at and it's got a hot and cold spot on there so that's where we're at I'll fill you guys in once they get everything finished up and we get this car started up any other issues we run into I will fill you in so guys new day I've got the key here they got it running yesterday uh, Manny and Xavier and they told me it ran absolutely beautiful and they left the key for me so I could take it for a ride now what he ended up using was one full V's and a little bit so that looks like it's five quarts because there's four per and almost down a full quart on that so uh, what we were looking at I think spec wise too was with uh, draining the torque converter which we did not do so let's go jump over to the car one more thing that I wanted to point out is uh, there's a very strong possibility you need to do a reset on the computer using star diagnostics i've mentioned this over and over it's something we got to do to that car there uh it's something we had to do to the uh s600 coupe but it was not necessary to get the s500 running so let's jump on in and take it for a spin so guys as you can see there he's got 197,000 miles so what a trooper this car has been this is his daily driver now he's got some lights you know like these little things that come on uh check engine light 
and uh, we think that's an O2 sensor, but this thing has been a very reliable car for him, and I'm excited to take it for a spin because I know he couldn't get it to basically come out a second, so let's just see what we can do. We'll just take it down the road, and he's got an exhaust on here, and it sounds awesome. All right, already shifted out, so I already know this thing is working great. The shifts are actually very, very good. So this is great. I'm gonna take it back because it is super hot and I wanna throw the AC on, so I'm gonna click off on this video. And there is my beautiful car. Unfortunately, she's got a flat tire, so she's rolling around with that stock spare and the R129, W126. So I'm gonna actually flip out for the W126. I'm gonna have a video coming out soon for that, guys, because we're gonna be doing a uh, rim swap on that, something I talked about in the past. So I'm excited about doing that because I need to do some spacers and I'll go through all that with you guys. So once again, guys, my name's Pete. This is Pete's Carport. I hope you enjoyed that awesome video. I got to collaborate with a good friend of ours now, Manny, who uh, has the YouTube channel Metal Unique. I'll link that down below. Check it out. He does a, quite a few Mercedes type of things. But the greatest thing is we got to keep another car on the road that has been a blessing to Xavier, and he absolutely loves this car and will never sell it. So you guys have an awesome day, a blessed week, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.